さん、こんにちは。Would you like to improve your English communication skills by learning binomials in English? Welcome to Jen's Jugyo. My name is Jen, and today we're going to talk about some examples of binomials using the word and to help you improve your English skills. First, you might be wondering what a binomial is. Many of you might know that the word by, the prefix by in front of a word, means two. So, a binomial is two words joined together with a conjunction that create a specific set phrase in English. The two conjunctions that are usually used in binomials are number one and number two or. For today's lesson, we're going to focus on 15 binomials that are using the word and. One important thing you need to remember about binomials is that they are a set fixed expression. For example, we usually say salt and pepper. We don't usually say pepper and salt. Or, for example, in terms of music, we have rock and roll. Nobody says roll and rock, right? So, those are examples of what a binomial is. A binomial is a type of collocation where the set of words that's going together usually goes in that specific exact order and speeds up communication if you already know what the binomials or collocations are. So, Let's get started with our 15 common binomials using the word and. Our first binomial expression for today is black and white. Black and white. So, yes, of course, black and white are colors, but if somebody says that something is black and white, what it means is that there is a right answer and a wrong answer. It's very simple and clear and easy to figure out. It's Black and white. If something is not black and white, we often say that it is a gray area. There's not definitely a right answer or a wrong answer, it's in between. Okay? So often the expression black and white is used in the negative. Don't make such a judgment like that. Things are not always black and white. Expression number two is loud and clear. The interesting thing about this collocation is that loud and clear doesn't actually mean loud at all. It really only means clear. So if something is loud and clear, usually is referring to directions or instructions that you have received from someone, right? So if my boss tells me to do something and then asks me, Do you understand? I will say, Yes, I understand. It's loud and clear. Number three. This expression is safe and sound. Safe and sound. Really, it's only technically referring to the word safe, but we use this binomial expression, safe and sound, to mean that someone has arrived somewhere without any harm happening to them. Nothing bad has happened to them and they are safe. So, oftentimes, if I'm hanging out with one of my friends, And they go home afterwards, I might text them to make sure that they got home. So, hey, did you get home all right? And they might respond, yeah, I got home safe and sound. Number four, ah,、oh, I'm sick and tired of this. Sick and tired. This expression, sick and tired, doesn't actually mean that you are <coughs> sick, it just means that you are. Exhausted with the idea of something. You're really annoyed and bothered by something. You want something to stop, right? So I'm sick and tired of telling my husband to do the exact same thing every day. Pick up your clothes. Please don't put your clothes on the floor. Put your clothes in the laundry basket. I am sick and tired of repeating these instructions. Number five is pros and Cons. Pros and cons. So basically, this means the positive points and the negative.
negative points of something, the advantages and the disadvantages. So, before making a big decision, I need to weigh out the pros and cons. I like to discuss the pros and cons of a situation before making an important decision. Number six, far and wide. The expression far and wide means a large area, a vast space, many places. For example, ruff, ruff. when my dog ran away, I searched for him far and wide until I finally found him. Now he's back home, safe and sound. Expression number seven is neat and tidy. Ugh. Neat and <coughs> tidy. I cleaned my house, so now it is neat and tidy. The broom's a little bit dusty though. Neat and tidy means that things are clean and well organized. Wow, this place is so neat and tidy. Expression number eight, wear and tear. Wear and tear. So even though I really love this book, and try to keep it in good condition, you can see that it's a little bit ripped and dog-eared here, okay? This is showing signs of wear and tear. It's not as new as it used to be. It's becoming a little bit broken, a little bit faded, okay? So you can use this in a positive sentence, like, oh, I need to be careful with this book. It's starting to show some wear and tear, or, Wow, I can't believe this car is already 20 years old. It has no signs of wear and tear. It looks brand new. Expression number nine, short and sweet. Short and sweet. So basically this is referring to something such as a letter or an email or a speech that is very brief, it's not very long, but the contents get directly to the point and say exactly what needs to be said and it's done in a nice way. So for example, at the graduation, the valedictorian was going to give their graduating speech and they kept it short and sweet. Less than two minutes with all of the key points and everyone felt it was a great speech. Short and sweet. Binomial number 10 is now and then. Now and then. I don't watch sports very often, but Every now and then, I enjoy a Blue Jays game. Now and then means sometimes. I don't always watch baseball, but my husband loves baseball. So sometimes I will watch a Toronto Blue Jays baseball game with him. Every now and then, I will go to a game. Expression number 11 is by and large. By and large. This means generally on the whole when you look at everything. So, for example, I just got back from vacation. There were a few bad points because it rained, but by and large, I had a great time. So by and large, generally, overall, for the most part, it was a great trip. Expression number 12, wine and dine. Wine and dine. So if you wine and dine someone, it means that you are treating them to a delicious meal and good company. Often this is used in business situations, right? So in order to get a contract with our new clients, we first had to wine and dine them. Number 13 is out and about, out and about. I don't usually like to stay in my house. I like to be out doing things. I like to go to work, go see a play, rehearse for another show, do some private tutoring, go to the art gallery, or museum, go for a walk. I like to be out and about, out and about. So this expression means that you don't like to stay in your house. You want to be outside of your house doing different activities. Be out and about. <laughs> Expression number 14 is peace and quiet. On vacation, some people like to be out and about, but some people want to just enjoy the peace and quiet. Okay? So peace and quiet is something that's usually used 
to be searching for peace and quiet or I'm looking forward to the peace and quiet, meaning being able to have a relaxing, quiet, restful time. I live in a big city and there's lots of chaos and many things happening all the time. So sometimes it's good to just go somewhere where you can <sighs> breathe, relax, and enjoy peace and quiet. And our last binomial for today is wait and see. Wait and see. So if I am applying for university and I applied to many different universities and I'm waiting for the answer, oh, I hope I get accepted to my dream school. Come on, come on, come on. When will the results come? When are they coming? Someone might say to me, well, wait and see, meaning you need to be patient and wait for the results of something, right? Or maybe I say to my mom, what did you get me for my birthday? What's my birthday present going to be? and maybe she has a special surprise planned for me, she might say, well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. If you're interested in learning some more expressions about wait, please check out this video I made about different ways to tell somebody to wait. So today, you learned 15 binomial pairs, 15 set expressions like collocations that we use in English almost every day. I hope that these expressions will be very useful for you in your conversations and help you to sound more like a native speaker. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, what are the pros and cons of going on vacation? And when you travel, do you like to have a vacation where you are out and about? Or do you like a vacation where you can find some peace and quiet? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button if you found it useful and give this video a thumbs up. Mina, thank you. Gambate ne, jane.